the resurrection power. That's the theme. We kick off. We are going to pray. The Lord said, Fear not, O land, that the Lord will do a great thing. This time around, greater than we have seen in the past, the Lord will do this retreat in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. All the preparations, the praying, the publicity, everything we need to do. We lay down our lives and say, God, use me. This retreat, I am full of expectation that everything that is dead in my life, dead in my family, as you pick in the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and he was raised triumphantly from the grave, Everything will be resurrected. Talk to the Lord. It will be a retreat with a difference. The Lord has promised that he will do great things. Let's call upon him. As he has promised, he, he will, will do. As he has promised, he will fulfill. Are you praying? Talk to the Lord. We will publicize it. We all get involved. Pray that the grace to publicize be among the company of the people that received the word when the Lord gave it. And then you go about publishing and publicizing it. Talk to the Lord. Personal prayer, personal preparations, Pray, the power of God will come down. Every sinner that steps into DLCC and any other location where our retreat will be holding will be arrested by the Spirit of the Living God. the resources we need, material and financial. The Lord will open the windows of heaven and bless his children and the heart, the willing heart and mind to give will be, will be granted, granted unto, unto every one of us and nothing will lack. We will not lack material things, we will not lack money. Pray. The Lord is our supplier. He will supply everything we need for this retreat. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A better amen. I want us to pray for the servant of God. In the Lord. Him. Talk to the Lord. Open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Exodus chapter 24, verse 7, And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has said, 
we will do and be obedient. This night, this evening, I want you to pray for yourself that all you are going to hear, all you are going to be taught, you will do and be obedient in Jesus' name. No tittle, no jot of it will be allowed to fall to the ground. Open your mouth and pray. Present yourself unto God. Let the Lord see your willingness. Let the Lord see your readiness, your preparedness to obey everything that you are going to receive. You'll be like Samuel that said unto the Lord, Speak, Lord, for your servant years. Lord, I am ready. I'm ready, I am prepared. I won't come here and go back without transformation. There are levels of transformation. You get higher and higher. If you are not yet in the kingdom, your life will be changed. You will obey, you will repent, and accept the word of God and become a child of God. You are already born again, you move forward. You will not allow any form of distraction. You will not allow any form of anxiety. You will not allow any form of worry, anything that wants to tug at your heart to distract you from the reason for being here, you will resist. Ask for the help of the Lord and tell the Lord, every bit of me, I am ready. I yield my life. I've come to the potter's house. You are the potter. I want you to use me like the potter will mold the clay to his own pleasure. Mold me. No resistance. No objection. Tell the Lord that he will do it for you. He said, you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Today, as you believe the Lord, He will do something new in your life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Our dear Father, we are indeed very grateful unto you because you have given us this great opportunity to once again come before your presence to be taught your word, to be illumined, to be transformed, to be taken to a higher level. Lord, as we yield our hearts, as we yield our lives completely into your hands, we are praying that that which is pleasing to you, use your word to do in our lives in Jesus' name. Anywhere there is any resistance, talking in any heart, Lord, we pray that with the sword of the Spirit, you will cut off such resistance in Jesus' name. The ability, O oh God, to receive your word and do, you will grant unto every child of yours in Jesus' name. Those who are coming for the first time, who are not born again, do a new thing in their lives today. We commit our Father in the Lord into your hands. You are prepared him. We pray the utterance the illumination. Father, that he needs to pass on what we have given him for the church. Grant unto him in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because we believe you fed and answered our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let us pray. Our mighty God and our Father in heaven, we thank you for our gathering here tonight at your presence. 
Father, we say, be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Eternal Father, as we want to go into the section of singing choruses to you, to praise your name, we pray. You will help us to sing in the spirit and with understanding in Jesus' name. Thank you for hearing our prayers and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, I pray. Praise the Lord. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We bow down before you. We glorify your name. We bow down before you. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We bow down before you. Lord, we bow down before you, our Father in heaven. We glorify your name. We bow down before you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Glory be to God. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Emmanuel. Excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent is your name. How excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent is your name, O oh Lord. How excellent is your name in all the earth, how excellent is your name, O oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name, in all the earth, how excellent is your name, it's your name, in all the earth, how excellent is your name, O oh Lord our God, how wonderful is your name in all the earth. How excellent is your name. In all the earth, how excellent is your name. Magnify him. Magnify him, magnify Christ the Lord, Christ the Lord. Exalt his name, magnify Christ the Lord, Christ the King. Magnify him, magnify I Christ the Lord, Christ the Lord. Exalt his name, magnify Christ the Lord. Blessed be thy name, blessed be thy name, blessed be thy name, O Lord. 
Lazer bi dainem, lazer bi dainem, lazer bi dainem, oh lol, lazer bi dainem, lazer bi dainem, lazer bi dainem, oh lol, lazer bi dainem. Blazer be thy name, blazer be thy name, O Lord, honor to your name. Honor to your name, blazer be your name, O Lord. Blazer be thy name, blazer be thy name, blazer be thy name. Oh Lord, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All other things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Righteousness, all other things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Every other thing shall be added unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And his righteousness, every other thing shall be added unto you. Is what is yea and amen. Is what is yea. Amen. Is what is yea and amen. Is what is yea. Amen. Is what is yea and amen. Is what is yea. Is what is yea and amen. 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 Satan. Never, never conquer me. Satan can never, never conquer me. Satan can never, never conquer me. When I pray to the Lord in faith, when I pray to the Lord in faith, Hallelujah. Satan can never, never. Satan can never, never conquer you if you pray to the Lord in faith. 
If you pray to the Lord in faith, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Satan can never, never conquer me. When I pray to the Lord in faith, when I pray to the Lord in faith, I want to pray, I want to pray, I want to pray. Lord, teach me how to pray. Like Elijah pray, like Elijah pray. I want to pray, Lord, teach me how to pray. I want to pray, I want to pray. Lord, teach me how to pray, like Elijah pray. Elijah pray. I want to pray. Lord, teach me how to pray. I want to pray. We want to pray. We want to pray. Lord, teach us how to pray. Like Elijah pray. Like Elijah pray. We want to pray, Lord, teach us how to pray. Lord, teach us how to pray, like Elijah prayed, like Elijah prayed. We want to pray, Lord, teach us how to pray. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Carry everything to God in prayer. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. Prayer is the master key, is the master key. Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. Prayer is the master key, is the master key. Prayer is the key, prayer is the master key. Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. 
Amen. Today, the Lord will touch your hearts and soul anew in Jesus' name. You are all welcome to the Bible study of today. And assembled here are the brethren, the regular brethren from Bagada, K2, and Shomulu districts. And um, with us are brethren from Isolo Old District. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. And anytime we come together like this, it's always a pleasure to identify those who are coming to study the Word of God with us for the very first time. So if today is your first time of coming to study the Word of God with us, we want you to please indicate by raising up your hand so that we can bring our warm greetings from our general superintendent. Wherever you are, please indicate by raising up your hand. God bless you. Please, you can rise up. You can stand up so that stand up wherever you are. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. Our general superintendent, our father in the Lord, is very delighted that you are coming to study with us. As God has used him to bless millions of people all over the world, I am sure that right from tonight, the Lord will start using him to bless you also in Jesus' name. And collect a slip from any of our ushers very close to you. Sit down, fill in the necessary information required on the slip, and return same to the ushers. We have three important meetings here every week in our church. On Mondays like this is a time of 
systematic and expository study of the Word of God. We move from book to book, from chapter to chapter, from verse to, uh, to verse. And over the years, it has been a Bible school and very enriching. So we encourage you to continue to come and you will learn more that will help you to prepare for eternity in Jesus' name. And on Thursday, we have a Thursday Revival Stroke Evangelism Training Service. It is a time we come together to have our faith boosted, increased, and we receive healings, deliverance, and God's blessings. And moreover, we are trained how to reach out to our neighbors and friends with the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that can transform their lives. Our Bible study is always by 5.50 p.m. We start with prayer, but Thursday Revival Stroke Evangelism Training Service is by 6 p.m. We have our Thursday Revival Stroke Evangelism Training Service in our various districts. Apart from the third Thursday of the month, when we have Power Night, a very important program here. That is the only time we come together from all over Lagos to have it here, but the rest we have in our various district. Make it a point of duty to identify with those that invited you. There are deeper life Bible churches scattered all over Lagos so that you can identify with the one close to you. And Sunday is a day of refreshing and renewal. It's a time when we hear the word of God undiluted also. And we also meet in our various districts except when it's our turn to come here for our combined worship service. The time is 7 45 a.m. As you identify and attend all these meetings, they will help you to prepare to meet the challenges of life and also to get ready to meet God in heaven. And God will bless you as you continue to come in Jesus' name. We rise up now as we give our tithes and offering unto the Lord. In Luke chapter 6, in verse 38. Eight. Give and it shall be given unto you good measure, praise down and shaking over and running over. Shaking together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with her, it shall be measured to you again. So whatever you are brought to give unto the Lord, put your hands in your bags and pockets, bring it out and lift it up as we pray now. Father, we thank you very much for giving us the most important gift, the gift of salvation, and also the gift of your son. We thank you for also blessing us with financial and material blessings. Out of the abundance you have given unto your children, we are offering the token we are lifting up right now. We pray you are saved from us and use it more and more for the enlargement of your kingdom in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because you have answered our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Open your eyes and drop your offerings in the bags being passed round. We remain standing as we take a congregational song from our gospel hymns and songs number 57. Ho, oh, reapers in the whiting harvest, of table faint and few, come, wait upon the blessed master, our strength he will renew. Too oft are weary and discouraged, we pour a sad complaint, believing in a living savior, why should we ever faint? Rejoice, for he is with us always. Lo, even to the end. Look up, take courage and go forward. All needed grace he'll send. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They shall run and not be weary. Shall walk and not faint.
Today we are going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The Book of Psalms. The Book of Psalms. Psalm 80. Psalm 80. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, Thou that dwellest between the cherubims, 
shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh stir up thy strength and come and save us. Turn us again, O God, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long wilt thou be angry against the prayer of thy people? Thou feedest them with the bread of tears, and givest them tears to drink in great measure. Thou makest us a strife unto our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Turn us again, O God of hosts, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. Thou preparedst room before it, and didst cause it to take deep root, and it filled the land. The hills were covered with the shadow of it, and the boughs thereof were like the goodly cedars. She sent out her boughs unto the sea, and her branches unto the river. Why hast thou then broken down her hedges, so that all they which pass by the way do pluck her? The boar out of the wood doth waste it, and the wild beast of the field doth devour it. Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven, and behold, and visit this vine, and the vineyard which thy right hand hath planted, and the branch that thou madest strong for thyself. It is burned with fire. It is cut down. They perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, upon the son of man whom thou madest strong for thyself. So will not we go back from thee. Quicken us, and we will call upon thy name. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Psalm 81 Sing aloud unto God our strength. Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. Take a psalm, and bring hither the timbrel, the pleasant harp with the psaltery. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. For this was a statute for Israel, and a law of the God of Jacob. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he went out through the land of Egypt, where I heard a language that I understood not. I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were delivered from the pots. Thou calledst in trouble, and I delivered thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee at the waters of Meribah. Selah. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee. O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. There shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies, and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. But their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat, and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. Psalm 82 God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. How long will ye judge unjustly, and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Psalm 83 Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites, of Moab and the Hagarenes, Gebal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Asser also has joined with them. They have hoped in the children of Lot. Selah. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabin at the brook of Kison, which perished at Endor. They became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and like Zeb, 
yea, all their princes, as Zeba and as Zalmunna, who said, Let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. O oh my God, make them like a wheel, as the stubble before the wind. As the fire burneth the wood, and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire, so persecute them with thy tempest, and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame, that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray.
walk by your side when you're tempted and tried and will lovingly die all the way every day if you Praise the Lord. That's good, but we can do better. I said, praise the Lord. I'm so happy to see you tonight, that we can study the Bible together. And I pray that the session tonight will be a blessing to every soul in Jesus' name. Before the study, I'm sure you have heard about the coming Easter retreat. I have heard, where are you? God bless you, I knew you will raise up your hand. The Lord is preparing something great for us at the retreat. And as you know, the theme is the resurrection power. Talk about power. Be there and something will happen to you. Every problem of your life, God will roll away. He'll put joy and laughter in your mouth in Jesus' name. Our leaders are preparing. The whole church is preparing. And we need to go out and tell other people so that everyone there, as we step at the Deeper Life Conference Center in Lagos here, and also in various places, as you step on the campground there, miracles will meet you on the way. All those tears God will wipe away. And the challenges of our lives, the Lord will answer your prayer. Am I talking to somebody there? He will answer your prayer. You'll be there. You will be there. I will see you there. Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for your people, dutiful people, faithful people, always coming like this every Monday. So, so you, you can, can speak, speak to our hearts. hearts. I'm asking tonight, you speak to every heart in Jesus' name. Amen. And the grace and, and the strength, strength to be doers of the word, you give to everyone tonight in Jesus' name. 
none of us will go back home empty handed add to our knowledge add to our understanding add to our faith and make us stand on the solid rock of ages that will never be moved in jesus name we well, thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray Coming to our study tonight, we are coming to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 18. Mark chapter 2, verse 18. And the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees used to fast. And they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but the disciples fast not. Tonight we are considering an important subject. And the topic is proper understanding of fasting in the new dispensation. Proper understanding of fasting in the new dispensation. Fasting has been practiced since the Old Testament times. The disciples of John fasted regularly. The disciples of John fasted frequently. Although John did no miracles, he taught his disciples how to pray. He also taught them about fasting. And there is no record that their fasting yielded any powerful wonderful result but they did it as a practice of the old testament discipline of course the pharisees too and their followers also fasted and they fasted often it was a religious tradition for the pharisees which did not bear any fruit or bring relationship with god they did not see the disciples of Christ fasting. And so they were concerned. Actually, it was like an air of pride. We, the disciples of John, were fasting. And the disciples of the Pharisees, they chewed their fasting. But your own disciples, they fast not. At least we don't ever see them fasting. Christ's disciples had salvation. They were not fasting yet, and they had supernatural signs, even though they were not fasting yet. And we know Jesus told 70 of them to rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Those disciples of the Pharisees never had any testimony like that. But they came to Jesus and said, How about this? We fast. And the disciples of John fast, but your own disciples do not fast at all. It was that question that brought great revelation from Christ on the subject of fasting. Look at the passage again. In Mark chapter 2, verse 18. And the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. And they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but the disciples fast not? Jesus said unto them, Can the disciple, can the children of the bride chamber fast, while the bridegroom is with them, as long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast? That's not the end of the answer, but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. Then shall they fast in those days. You see what the Lord Jesus said? He said while he was with them, showing them the message of the kingdom, the miracles of the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom. And he was performing all these miracles and every need of their lives he met. And the needs of many other people too he met. He said, while I am with them, as the bridegroom, they cannot fast, they will not fast. But the time will come 
when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them they will be on earth and the bridegroom Christ will be in heaven at that time he said they will fast in those days then he said in verse 21 no man also sows a piece of new cloth on an old garment and he says else the new piece that filled each up take it away from the old and the rent is made worse that was like an illustration to them that's an old cloth that has been worn and washed a lot of times and it's almost threadbare and now because of the tearing or because it needs some repair you bring a new piece of cloth and you sew it in it says because that cloth is old the new one is still having all the strength it will tear at the rim and then he also says and no man puts put his new wine into old bottles the bottles they used those days were wine skins and the, the skins when it dries up it will be stiff and if you put something that will expand it will burst it it's not the uh, bottles that we use today that's why it says no man put his new wine into old bottles else the new wine does burst the bottles remember their wines their skins and the wine is spilled and the bottles will be matched or be destroyed but new wine must be put in new bottles new wine must be put in new bottles as we look at those verses tonight there are three things we're looking at I've said the topic tonight is proper understanding of fasting in the new dispensation. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the powerlessness of fasting with the old character. Those Pharisees came. There's no change in their lives. There was no righteousness acceptable to the Lord. There was no salvation. And they did not have a relationship with God. They still had their old character. And they were fasting. The powerlessness of fasting or the old character. Point number two. The provision of fullness for new creatures in Christ. Those who are saved. Those who are children of God. And they have good relationship, intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the bridegroom, and they are the children of the bridegroom. He says, because he's there, he provides fully for them. It's like in a marriage wedding. At the marriage wedding, the bridegroom is there, and the bridegroom has provided everything. Nobody is going to go to that wedding fasting because he is invited to come and take of the feast of that marriage. And so, point number two, the provision of fullness for new creatures in Christ. Point number three, Jesus said, the time will come. When those disciples of his, and we as disciples, when Christ would have been taken to heaven, and we are here on earth, it, say, it said, at that time, when we are separated, we on earth and he in heaven, it said, and that time we will fast. Point number three, the potentials of fasting under the new covenant is gone to the cross. He has died for us. He was buried. He rose. He came for our justification. And he has ascended to heaven. We are separated now. As earth is separated from heaven. He says at that time we will fast. Let's come back to point number one. In point number one, the powerlessness of fasting with the old character. We're looking at that mark again, chapter 2, verse 18. And the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. And they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast? But the disciples fast not. 
Luke records that for us in Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 35, 33. Luke chapter 5, verse 33. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often? That word often explains why they came. It's not just like once in a while. They fasted often. They fasted frequently. And then he goes on to say in that verse 33, and make prayers, and make prayers. You see, John also taught them how to pray. And they repeated those prayers that John had taught them. And yet, there's no record of miracle. There's no record of healing. There's no record of power manifestation. But they made the prayers and they fasted often. And likewise, the disciples of the Pharisees, but thine eat and drink. It's, it's a question that concerns many people. That there are people that are fasting, you know, and yet there is no result. Other people are not fasting, you know, and they are having results. The question is, why did those people fast and there wasn't any result? We're coming to Isaiah chapter 58, and I'm reading from verse 3. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 3. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we fasted, and thou seest not? Prayers are not answered. Power is not manifested. Transformation does not happen. A change does not happen. And yet, like the Pharisees, like the disciples of John, they fast often, and there was no answer from heaven. And there was no supernatural sign attending their fasting. Why? Because in their fasting, they had falsehood. F for falsehood. Fasting and falsehood. Look at Jeremiah chapter 14. Jeremiah chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 12. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. When they offer bond offering and oblation, I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword and by the farming and by pestilence. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, the prophets say unto them, Ye shall not see such, neither shall ye see farming, but I will give you a short peace in this place. Look at verse 14. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither speak unto them. Look at this, look at this. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a sin of naught and the deceit of their own heart. False prophecy, false expectation, and false way of life. Because of falsehood in their lives, God said in verse 12, when they fast, I will not hear their cry. Not only that, all these people that are fasting and fasting and fasting, there is a falsehood, there is a adamant, adamant. They are adamant at doing evil. They are adamant at resisting the word of God. Show them the word of God about repentance. Show them the word of God about restitution. Show them the word of God about righteousness. Ah, I don't want to hear that. But I'm going to twist the hand of God by fasting. Look at Zechariah chapter 7. Zechariah chapter 7. I'm reading here from verse 5. 
He said, those who are adamant in evil, they may fast, they will not hear. Those who are adamant in sinning, they may fast, I will not hear. Look at it, Zechariah chapter 7, verse 5. Speak unto all the people of the land, and to the priests, and say, when ye fasted and mourned in the feast and seventh month, even though seventy years, did ye all at all fast unto me, even unto me? Look at these people, they were regular and they were frequent. It was a habit. At this particular time of the year, that particular time of the year, they will fast all through 70 years and it says in verse 6 and when you did eat when you when you did drink and did not ye drink for yourselves and drink unto yourselves should ye not hear the words which the lord had cried by the former prophets when jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity and the cities thereof round about when men inhabited the south and the plain come to verse 11 but they refused to hack in they pulled away the shoulder they were fasting they were fasting and yet it says they pulled away the shoulder they stopped their ears that they should not hear look at this verse 12 yea they made their hearts as an adamant stone. They were adamant in doing evil. They were fasting. Number one, they had falsehood for their fasting. Number two, they were adamant in evil, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his, in his spirit by the former prophets Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts, even though they were fasting. Look at verse 13. Therefore, it has come to pass that as he cried, and they would not hear, so they cried, and I would not hear, says the Lord of hosts. Why were they fasting? Pharisees, even the disciples of John, and there's no answer, and there's no miracle. F for fasting, there was falsehood in their lives. A, in fasting, there was adamant. They were adamant in doing evil. S, there was, there was strife. There was fasting, yes, but there was strife. Look at Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58, I'm reading from verse 3. It says in verse 3, Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not, Wherefore, have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate. That's why their prayers were not answered. They were fasting in falsehood. They were fasting and they were adamant in committing sin. They were fasting and they had strife. It says, behold in verse 4, ye fast for strife and debate to smite with the feast of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is he to bow down, he said, as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast and an acceptable day unto the Lord? In verse 6, is not this the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness? and to undo the heavy bodies and to let the oppressed go free and that she break every yoke you see why their fasting did not mean anything in the sight of god there was falsehood in character 
hypocrisy in their character. There was falsehood in their relationship. There was falsehood in their worship in their religion. Not only that, they were adamant in wanting to do evil. And all the evil sins they were doing, they were not repentance. They didn't turn away from their sins. They were adamant. Even though the prophet spoke to them and said, This is the way walk ye therein. They said, No. Whatever comes out of our mind, of our mouth, that's what we are going to do. They, they had falsehood, F, A, they had adamant heart, and S, they had strife. T, they had transgression. You see, if somebody is fasting, and is fasting inside transgression, he has been transgressing the commandment of God. He has been doing something contrary to the will of God. But he said, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I may be a transgressor, doesn't matter. I may be transgressing the commandments of God, but yet I will fast and pray and something will happen. My brother, my sister, nothing will happen because you fast in transgression. Look at Second Samuel. Second Samuel, I'm reading from chapter 11, and I'm reading from verse 27. Second Samuel, chapter 11, verse 27. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife, and bare him a son. But the sin that David had done displeased the Lord. The sin that David had done displeased the Lord. But you know, David, he said, I have the Psalms, and I will pray, and I will fast. And as I fast, even though this child is having this sickness, this child will not die. I will rescue the life of the child while fasting. Look at chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 16. Chapter 12, verse 16. David therefore besought God for the child. And David fasted, 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 and went in and lay all night upon the earth. He would not sleep upon his bed. He rolled on the ground. He slept on the bare ground. And he fasted, he will not eat. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not, he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. It came to pass, he fasted for seven days. I will fast, I will change the mind of God by fasting, but iniquity and sin were in his life. And because of the transgression, God said, I will not answer. Fasting, yes, we must get rid of falsehood. Fasting, yes, we must get rid of that adamant heart and adamant decision. I will do what I want to do, but I'll change everything by fasting. It will not work. Fasting, yes, we must remove strife away from our lives. Fasting, yes, there must be no transgression. Fasting, I impenitence, impenitence. There are people who are impenitent, although they fast and they wait upon the Lord and they say, We will change the mind of God with fasting. Impenitence. Look at Jeremiah chapter 36. Jeremiah chapter 36. I'm reading from verse 6. In Jeremiah chapter 36. Reading from verse 6, here he tells us, Therefore go thou and read in the roll, that's the book of God, which thou hast written from my mouth, the words of the Lord in the ears of the people in the Lord's house upon the fasting day. They had arranged and proclaimed a day of fasting. And the Lord said, Jeremiah, go to them and show them the word of God and read the word of God to them on their fasting day. And also thou shalt read them in the ears of all Judah that come out of their cities. Look at verse 9. And it came to pass in the fifth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, in the ninth month, 
that they proclaimed a fast before the Lord. They proclaimed a fast before the Lord. And then it says to all the people in Jerusalem and to all the people that came from the cities of Judah unto Jerusalem. It's one thing to fast, but with what mind and with what art, with what disposition, with what kind of life. Look at them now from verse 21. In verse 21, these people who are fasting, on that fasting day they are pronounced and proclaimed that there was impenitence. Look at it, verse 21. So the king sent Jehudai to fetch the rule, and he took it out of Elishama, the scribe's chamber, and Jehudai read it in the ear of the king. Remember, this was their fasting day. And they were fasting and fasting. And now the word of God was read. And the ears of all the princes which stood beside the king. Now the king uh, sat in the winter house in the ninth month. And there was a fire on the hearth burning before him. And it came to pass that when Jehudai had read three or four leaves, he caught each with the penknife and cast each into the fire that was on the hearth until all the roll was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth. Verse 24, yet they were not afraid nor rent their garments, neither the king nor any of his servants that heard all these words, fasting and fasting and fasting, and yet not hearing the word of God. And they were impenitent, they will not change, they will not turn around. Their fasting meant nothing in the sight of the Lord. Look at Proverbs chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 9. Proverbs chapter 28, reading from verse 9. It says in verse 9, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, the word of God, even his prayer shall be abomination. That's why God did not uh, take note of uh, all their fasting. That's why their fasting bore no fruit. That's why their fasting did not yield any result. They had fasting with falsehood. They had fasting with being adamant. They had fasting with strife. They had fasting with transgression. They had fasting with impenitence. They had fasting in with negligence. Negligence. Come to Luke chapter 18. In Luke chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 11. Luke chapter 18, we're reading from verse 11. These were the Pharisees, and they fasted quite a lot. Look at them here now. In Luke chapter 18, reading from verse 11. The Pharisees stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not like other men are extortioners, unjust, adulterers, even as this publican, I fast twice in the week. Think about that. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. But if you know the Pharisees at all, as Jesus exposed them, you'll see that they were neglecting something very important. There was negligence in their lives. Come to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. And I'm reading from verse 23. Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. One to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye pay tithes of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. You keep tithes, you fast twice in the week, but it's negligence in your life. You have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. They need to have faith in Christ. 
they rejected Christ. But they said, no, we don't want him. It's not a Messiah. It's not the anointed one. Other people believed on the Lord when they heard the Lord. They said, this must be the Christ. But they neglected faith. And he said, these sought it to have done and not to, have le and not to leave the other undone. And then there is fasting with godlessness. Fasting with godlessness. We're looking at First Kings chapter 21. First Kings chapter 21. And I'm reading from verse 9. Can you imagine some people that fast like this passage? We're going to read godlessness. In First Kings chapter 21 verse 9. And she wrote in the letter saying, Proclaim a fast and set neighbors on high among the people. And set two men, sons of Belial, before him to be a witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. And the men of the city, even the elders and the nobles who were of the inhabitants of the city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them. And as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them, they proclaimed a fast and set neighbors on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Belial, and sat before, the, before him. And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. And there was nothing like that. And then they carried him forth out of the city, and stoned him that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. Look at verse 15. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said unto Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money. Now for Naboth is not alive but dead. The people that have greed, greed. They fast but they have greed. They fast but they are godless. And because of that, their fasting is worthless in the sight of the Almighty God. Look at Psalm 36, reading from verse 1. Psalm 36, reading from verse 1. It tells us here, Psalm 36 verse 1, the transgression of the wicked said within my heart that there is no fear of God before their eyes. There's no fear of God before their eyes. With all their fasting, what's the attitude of God to them? With all their fasting, what's God thinking or planning concerning them? Look at Psalm 7 verse 11. Psalm 7, verse 11. God judges the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. God is angry with the wicked every day. If there's falsehood in that person's life, if there is adamant behavior, is made up his mind, what evil he will do, he will do, no matter what you preach. And yet, there's fasting, and there's strife, there's fighting. And there's transgression, there's impenitence, there's negligence, there's godlessness. God is angry with the sinner every day. He may fast. He may say, I will change everything by fasting. No, you cannot change anything by fasting if you are a transgressor. Because we're told in Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 27. Proverbs 21 verse 27 the sacrifice of the wicked is abomination how much more when he bringeth each with a wicked mind 
the self-denial of the wicked is abomination the fasting of the wicked is abomination and the gift of the wicked is abomination how much more when he brings it with a wicked heart let's come back now to um, mark chapter 2 mark chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 18 and the disciples of john and of the pharisees used to fast and they come and say unto him why do the disciples of john and of the pharisees fast but the disciples fast not verse 19 and jesus said unto them can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them is the time of feasting is the time of joy and it is a time of the fullness of provision because the bridegroom is with them is healing the sick is raising the dead is cleansing the lepers is multiplying food and is making thousands to eat out of a out of small amount of food is doing great things he has come with the fullness of blessing and is the bridegroom is with his disciples how can they fast in such a situation as long as they have the bridegroom with them they cannot fast the provision of fullness for the new creatures in christ look at john chapter 3 and see who is referred to as the bridegroom john chapter 3 verse 28 john chapter 3 verse 28 he yourself bear me witness john was saying that I said, I am not the Christ, but I am sent before him. Verse 29, he, that is Christ, that has the bride, is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy Therefore, it's fulfilled. It's a funny to Christ. It's a Christ. It's a bridegroom. And Jesus said, while the bridegroom is with them, with his disciples, those disciples cannot fast. Why? Because they have the fullness. Come to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. I'm reading here from verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name. Those are the disciples, they believed on his name. Look at verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld this glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The fullness, the fullness. Look at verse 16. And of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. The provision of fullness while the bridegroom was with them. Look at John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Reading from verse 37, in the last day, that great day of the feast, that great day of the feast, the bridegroom is here, and because the bridegroom was of them, it was feasting time. Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man says, let him come unto me and drink. He doesn't need to fast this feasting time. The bridegroom is here. Let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Look at chapter 10 of John. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come, that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. It's a time of abundance. It's the time of abundant supply while the bridegroom was with them. And that's why he told those people that came to ask the question, we are fasting and the Pharisees are fasting and your disciples are not fasting. Why? He said, because they are the bridegroom with them. And he has come to provide for them the fullness. Look at chapter 15. Chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 11. Chapter 15. 
I'm reading here from verse 11. It says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. He brought fullness to them. That's why they could touch him. And they could reach him, and they could speak to him, and they could say, Master, Master, we perish. And then he would rise up and say, Peace be still. The time of fullness was what then? John chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 24. John 16, verse 24. He that told of ye ask nothing in my name, ask that ye may receive that your joy may be full. Looks like tonight your joy can be full. I said tonight your joy can be full. And look at Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, fullness. The fullness of God coming in our lives because of our relationship with the bridegroom. Because he said, I will never leave you. Because he said, I am with you always. And because he's with us, we receive of his fullness. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what's the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. You will know it. You will have it. You will receive in Jesus' name and that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. You see that? That she might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end. And the people of God said... Colossians, Colossians chapter 2, the fullness, the provision of fullness for us. As you come to the Lord, he has the fullness waiting for you. And he has the fullness abiding. Colossians chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the God of, of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him. And ye are complete in him. Anything that is incomplete there tonight, the Lord will add to your life. You'll be complete in Jesus' name. Spiritually, you'll be complete. Physically, you'll be complete. And every area of your life, you'll be complete in Jesus' name. And ye are complete in him, which is the hedge of all principality and power. This fullness of the Lord, how do we get the fullness? How do we dive into that fullness? How do we receive of the fullness of the Lord? It's all by faith. It's all by faith. As you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, your faith will not fail. Your faith will not waver. And you receive of the fullness. Look at Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. To have peace with God, we don't need to fast. Already he's paid the price. Already has shared his blood. And the Lord says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Look at verse 2 by whom we have access by faith. We have access to the fullness of God by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope, in the glory of God. Let's come to Acts of the Apostles chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. 
if we uh, verse 9 Acts chapter 15 verse 9 the fullness includes salvation we get it by faith the fullness includes sanctification we get it by faith Acts chapter 15 verse 9 and put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ will be sanctified. Not only that, if you're sick, we get healing by faith. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, and I read from verse 16. And in his and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know, yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Faith will take away sickness from your body. Faith will take infirmity away from your body. As you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you know, by his stripes I am healed. Healing has come. I said healing has come. The promise of the Spirit, that is Holy Ghost baptism, Holy Ghost power, it comes by faith. Galatians chapter 3, verse 14. Galatians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 14. It says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we, are you part of this? That we, I said, are you part of this? that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. We receive the power of the Spirit, and we receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And then in all your temptations and trials, you will conquer. I'm talking to conquerors. I said you will conquer. How do we conquer? We conquer by faith. First John chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 4. First John chapter 5, reading from verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Any arrow of the devil, any arrow of wicked people that comes your way, will not touch you, yeah. will not reach you. Yeah. But how? If in Ephesians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. All the fiery darts, how many of them? I said how many of them? It, if it's coming from the east or coming from the south or coming from the north or coming from anywhere, your faith will break everything and quench everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. What the Lord is telling us is that He has provided abundance for us. He has provided the fullness for us, and we can get the fullness by faith. We're coming to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11, reading from verse 22. Mark chapter 11, reading from verse 22. And Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God. The Lord is telling you tonight, have faith in God. That mountain will move. Have faith in God. That difficulty will vanish away. Have faith in God. All those things harassing your life tonight is the end in Jesus' name. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou remote and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he says I will have whatsoever I say I will have whatsoever I say 
therefore in verse 24 therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them and ye shall have them and ye shall have them you will have them even from tonight in jesus name point number three now the potentials of fasting under the new covenant the potentials of fasting under the new covenant we're coming to mark chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 20 mark chapter 2 we're reading from verse 20 but the days will come jesus said the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them then shall they fast in those days it says there'll be times when you don't feel the presence of the lord as you ought to feel that presence you don't sense the presence of the lord as you ought to sense that presence it's like the bridegroom is taken away and i look for him here i can't find him i hear the choir singing even though they are singing well but i can't find him i hear the preacher preaching but i can't see him and the problem is there and it's weighing you down and you say where is my lord where is my christ where is my healer where is my deliverer where is the bridegroom it's like he's taking away from me it says at that time when that vacuum is there at that time when that need is there and it appears that the bridegroom is taken away from you it says at such a time they will fast and jesus gave directives as to how we ought to fast in matthew chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 17 matthew chapter 6 we're reading from verse 17 but thou when thou fastest anoint thy head and wash thy face that thou appear not unto men to fast but unto thy father which is in secret and thy father which seeth you fasting in secret shall reward thee openly your fasting will not be in vain your fasting will not be for nothing your fasting will not be worthless your father will see the condition of your heart your father will see your importunity in prayer and the father will answer your prayers look at matthew chapter 17 matthew chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 19 matthew 17 verse 19 then came the disciples to jesus apart and said why could we not cast him out you gave us power in chapter 10 and we went out in that power and many people were healed and even the devils the demons they were subdued but now this one we couldn't do this one why couldn't we do this jesus said unto them because of your unbelief for verily i say unto you if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed ye shall say unto this mountain the time has come for you you will talk to that mountain and if you need to fast a day or two you will fast and then the power of that fasting when you speak to that mountain that mountain must move away all my mountains will move away i said all my mountains will move away every mountain in your family every mountain in your profession every mountain around you as you wait upon the lord you will speak to that mountain it will vanish away you will say remove hands to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you how do you like it that nothing shall be possible unto you how do you want it that nothing shall be possible unto you are you there it must happen in your life i said it must happen in your life but look at verse 21 how be it this kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting but by prayer and fasting 
if you will take that challenge as well to take that challenge and the fasting doesn't have to be long long fasting doesn't have to be for weeks or for months you can even start a little and you you can end it at 12 o'clock for a start because you've never tried it before or you can end at six o'clock and then during that day your mind is centered on that issue is centered on that problem even though you, you go to work even though you are your office but your mind is telling the lord sending an sos unto god while you are waiting on the lord you are saying oh lord this mountain will move this mountain will move you are walking you turn here this mountain will move you turn there this mountain will move and then you come back home and maybe at six o'clock or seven o'clock you now say lord i want to take this problem by the horn and now i speak to my mountain and i command you mountain get out of my life in jesus name it will go i said it will go this kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting you know the early church the early church prayed were fasting and let's come now to acts of the apostles chapter 13 acts of the apostle chapter 13 i'm reading here from verse 2 acts chapter 13 verse 2 as they ministered to the lord and fasted you see that because now christ has gone to heaven the bridegroom has gone to heaven and they were here on earth and the field was white for harvest and they needed more power they needed more strength they needed more courage to go out into the field and do the work as they ministered to the lord and fasted the holy ghost said separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them and when they had fasted they were fasting the message came they continued fasting until they finished when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them they sent them away so they being sent forth by the holy ghost departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to cyprus the point is those disciples and apostles they prayed and they fasted even after the day of Pentecost. So somebody cannot say, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. So there's no necessity of fasting in my life. If you want more power, if you want more authority, if you want more anointing, if you want that anointing that breaks every yoke, if you want more result and more fruit, as they did in the early church, you will do, and the power of God will multiply your life in Jesus' name. We're coming to, we're coming to Acts of the Apostles chapter 14. Acts chapter 14, I read from verse 21. Look at this, and, and when they had preached the gospel to that city, and I taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Whatever your trial, you'll be an overcomer. Whatever the trouble, you'll be an overcomer. Look at verse 23, verse 23. And when they had ordained them elders in every church, and had prayed with fasting, and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. On whom they believed. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 is uh, fasting uh, available for every believer, every child of God. Look at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 5. Defraud ye not one the other, except ye be with consent for a time. It's talking to husband and wife. 
is talking to them as they relate together that they don't uh, cheat each other and they don't deny each other defraud ye not one the other except it be with consent for a time that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer with consent the wife might tell the husband i want to wait on the lord the husband might tell the wife i want to wait on the lord and with consent the husband can do it and the wife can do it so that you give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again it's not an indefinite 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 fasting come together again that satan tempts you not for your incontinency Let's think about Paul the Apostle. When he came to know the Lord, you know how he started Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. Acts of the Apostles chapter 9, and I'm reading from verse 9. Acts chapter 9, verse 9. Here is Paul the Apostle. He just came to know the Lord and see what he did. Acts 9, verse 9. And it was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Paul the Apostle, neither did eat nor drink in his life as a believer, in his life as an apostle, in his life as a minister. Did he continue fasting because we've seen him at the beginning of his Christian life? Let's look at him now after I became an apostle. He tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and we're reading from verse 27. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 27, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, hunger and thirst, that one is not fasting, he didn't have anything to eat, he didn't mean to fast, he called that hunger and he called that thirst, but then he says, in fastings often, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, Paul the Apostle, was a disciplined uh, minister, a disciplined apostle. At the beginning of his Christian life, he fasted for three days, eating nothing and drinking nothing. And then in the life of the minister, in his life as a minister, he continued once in a while, he will fast, he will wait upon the Lord. That didn't decrease his duty. That didn't take away anything from all the assignment God gave him. What's the result in the life of Paul the Apostle? That he fasted, that he waited upon the Lord. What was the result in his life? Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. Look at the result. The power of God was present in his life. The power of God will be present in your life. Did I hear an amen? Yeah. Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 8. But Elimus the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation. We stood them, seeking to turn the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. When the deputy, the, the, then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. That man had power. You will have power. But you know, it was not an easy thing, just easy going life and eating too much and drinking too much. I cannot miss my breakfast. I cannot miss any meal. You will discipline yourself. There will, there will be times to wait upon the Lord and power will multiply in your life. Look at chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 7. 
and there they preached the gospel and there sat a certain man at Lystra impotent in his feet being a cripple from his mother's womb he was born like that who never had walked the same heard Paul speak and who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had failed to be healed said with a loud voice stand upright on thy feet and he lived and walked that's power I said that's power if we have a hundred people here tonight that will wait upon the Lord, a hundred people, a hundred sisters, a hundred brothers that will say, we're going to wait upon the Lord. I'm going to make sure that there is no falsehood in my life and there is no adamant attitude in my life and there is no strife and there's no transgression and there's no impenitence, there's no iniquity and there's no negligence and there's no greed, there's no godlessness. I am going to wait upon the Lord the Lord will honor your dedication and the Lord will honor your consecration and power will multiply your life in Jesus name uh, let's look at chapter 16 of, of Acts, Acts chapter 16 and I'm reading here from verse uh, from verse 16 Acts chapter 16 verse 16 and it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damson named a possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by so saying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These are the men and the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. They she did many days, but Paul. There's power in that man. I said there was power in that man. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. He came out the same hour. God will grant you more anointing. Look at verse 25. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prison, the prisoners had them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaking. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands loosed. That power can come upon your life. That power can be manifested in your life. But you know, you must have a mind to seek the Lord. You must have a mind to wait upon the Lord. You must have a mind that I'm not going to remain the way I've always been. And as I seek the face of the Lord, and I hold on to the promises of God, and I make sure I clear the way there is no sin, there is no evil. And I'm saying, Lord, I need this power to honor you, to glorify you, and to deliver the oppressed. Power will come upon your life. Look at Acts chapter 19. I'm reading from verses 11 and 12. Acts chapter 19, verses 11 and 12. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. So that from his body were brought unto the sick and cashiers or aprons. And the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them it will happen again we're coming to romans chapter 15 romans chapter 15 i read from verse 18 romans chapter 15 reading from verse 18 for i will not dare to speak of any of those things which christ has not wrought by me this paul talking to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed, through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem to round and round the bout unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. 
But as it is written, to whom it was he was not spoken of, they shall see. And they that have not heard shall understand. Through Paul, they heard. Through you, they will hear. Through Paul, they saw the glory of God, the power of the Lord. And through you, they will hear in Jesus' name. Let's come back now to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. I'm reading from verses 21 and 22. No man also sews a piece of new clothes on an old garment. Else the new piece that filled it up takes away from the old and the wrench is made worse. And no man puts new wine into old bottles. Else the new wine doth burst the bottles and the wine is peeled and the bottles will be mad. What was he saying? He was saying, you know, these were Pharisees that came. And then the disciples of John were on the sideline. And they were saying, why are we doing this? And your disciple is not doing it. He was telling them, old tradition is not compatible with this new teaching. He was teaching on being born again. That's new. Teaching them about eternal life. That's new. Teaching them about the fullness that they brought from heaven. That's new. And their old tradition cannot be matched, will not be compatible with the, old, with the new teaching. What was he telling them? The old rites and rituals of the Old Testament, of the law of Moses, will not be compatible with the new righteousness that comes by faith. What was he telling them? He was telling them the old practice will not match, will not be compatible with the New Testament provision and promises. The New Testament provision and promises, he has promised us all things freely to enjoy. And all those practices of the Old Testament, you cannot put that in the, in the old wine scheme or, or, or new wine scheme or selling them that the old covenant religion, the religion of the old covenant is not compatible with the relationship of a new covenant. That's a new covenant now. And Christ is the mediator of that new covenant. And you cannot bring the old religion, old covenant. You cannot bring that into the new relationship. He was telling them the old concept of love. Love your friends and hate your enemies. That old concept cannot come in now. This is new commandment that you love everyone as I have loved you and you love your enemies as well. The Old Testament people were servants of fear, and they had servants' fear. But you see, the New Testament, we have the Son's faith. It says the faith of the Son is something new. And the fear of the servant in the Old Testament will not be compatible or selling them full surrender to Moses that they had in the Old Testament will not be compatible with full submission to the Messiah. And he said, you cannot mix them. You cannot bring everything together. You must bring the old, the new wine into the new bottle. New wine into new bottle. What does that mean? It means new face in the new creature. It's now a new creature. If any man is in Christ, it's a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. And now you have new face and you have new creature new faithfulness to the new commander he is now a commander and he's leading the way and we're following him and now we have new faithfulness to the new commander it's new followership of the new captain is the captain of our salvation and this is very new it's not something of the old covenant of the old testament and it says you we'll put new wine into new bottle new followership of the new captain it's talking of the freshness that comes now the comforter will come and when the comforter comes it will guide you into all truth you have new freshness 
from the new comforter. It's talking about the new fellowship that we now have, and it is the new fellowship in a new congregation. It's not the congregation of the Old Testament. We have to go and say, you offer animal, and we have to slaughter the animal and apply the blood. It's been done once and for all. And the atonement of Jesus Christ brings us into that new congregation with new fellowship. It's talking about the new freedom we have, and it's coming from the counselor. His name shall be called Counselor and Wonderful, the Mighty God. And because this is totally new, he is now counseling us, leading and directing us. Because of that new counselor, we have new freedom. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. It says, Leave the old, leave that tradition, leave all those things of the old covenant, and come anew, and there's new wine in a new bottle. It's talking now about the new fasting and the new with a new comprehension. New fasting. Not the fasting of those old people, Old Testament people, and they fasted and fasted and fasted. What did they realize? But now it says come to the new covenant and come to the new testament and have a new comprehension. New fasting with new comprehension. Now he has told us as we wait upon the Lord, you renew your strength. Somebody there said you renew your strength. Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah chapter 40, I'm reading from verse 28, As thou not known, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There's no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. Power waiting for you today. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the, old, and the young men shall utterly fall. But, but, are they here tonight? I said, are they here tonight? Are you going to increase your power tonight? Increase your boldness tonight? Increase your anointing tonight? But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Your time or tiredness can end tonight. Weariness can end tonight. Weakness can end tonight. Power, courage, and boldness can be multiplied in your life tonight. They that wait upon the Lord. You are the brother, you are the sister. Rise up, spend some time in prayer before the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You will mount up with wings as eagles. You will run, you will not be weary. You will walk, you will not faint. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Brothers and sisters, this is the very time for us to make up our minds that tonight weariness can come to an end. Weaknesses can come to an end. Let's open our mouths and call upon the name of the Lord. There is power, real, real power. There is power inherent in prayers and fasting. The power you have it tonight. Proper understanding of fasting in the new dispensation. 
The Lord has enriched our lives again tonight to see in depth through through how we can benefit from scriptural prayer and fasting. In Jesus' name we pray. You have seen tonight the powerlessness of fasting with the old character, the old character of falsehood, the old character of being adamant, of strife, of transgression, of impenitence, of negligence, of godlessness and greed. You need to examine your life tonight. You need to examine your life tonight. You need to check through your life tonight. Are these things still found in my life? No wonder. Fasting upon fasting, and there is no result. You need to look in what's tonight. You need to sincerely examine yourself tonight. Is falsehood there? Are you adamant? Resisting the world, doing evil, and while you are fasting, there is strife. There is strife. There is malice. There is transgression. Let us be sincere with ourselves tonight and make sure that we are part of all these things that will hinder our prayers from being answered, even though we fast in penitence, negligence, fasting with godlessness. God, that woman Jezebel, they plan evil and they say, proclaim a fast. It's a deception today. Let's pray. Let's seek the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Brethren, there is a provision of fullness for new creations in Christ. At the point of salvation, all things are passed away. The Bible says, and behold, all things are become new. As new creatures, we have provisions of fullness of Christ manifesting in our lives. Tonight, your joy will be full. I said tonight, your joy will be full. Because as a new creature, you will receive that fullness, that fullness from Christ, filled with the fullness of God. Tonight is on night. I said tonight is on night. You will be filled with the fullness of God. Open your mouths and pray. Tell the Lord about it. So that spiritually, physically, in your career, there will be fullness. Open your mouth and pray. Call upon the name of the Lord. For in him dwelleth 
all the fullness, all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him. Ye are complete in Christ, which is the head of all principality and power. That is the great provision for you and me, because we are new creatures. We are out and pray. Let's commit ourselves to the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. I read in Romans chapter 5, then verses 1 and 2. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God, you will rejoice. I say you will rejoice. We are going to pray that the faith that brings healing, the faith that takes away sicknesses from our lives, that faith is coming your way tonight. Can I hear you open your mouth and pray? The faith That we set all oppression packing. The faith that we destroy every power of the enemy. The faith that we crush totally and completely all the activities and the strategies of the devil in your life. You are the faith tonight. You are the power of faith tonight. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. You will conquer by faith. You are delivered by faith. You receive tonight the power of the Holy Ghost by faith. Implicit faith. Do you believe the Lord? Implicit faith. We do great things, wonders in our lives. Pray and receive. Have faith in God. Oppression will pack its load and go. Have faith in God. Fear will pack its load and go. Have faith in God. You will conquer. You will conquer. In Jesus' name we pray. Do you know that? I don't know what that mountain is in your life. You look at it. But one thing I want to assure you is that tonight, that mountain will bow. That mountain will become a play. And you will walk through your victory in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Every mountain will vanish away. The bulldozer of heaven, the 
powers of heaven, we clear, we remove every mountain tonight. Pray and tell the Lord. Pray and tell the Lord. Every mountain, mountain of fear, mountain of joblessness, mountain of Mr. Terrible. We vanish away tonight. Pray. Tell the Lord. You will look around them. The Red Sea. The Egyptians who see tonight. You look for them. You never find them anymore. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Brothers and sisters, look at the life of Apostle Paul, a man of great power, and even right from, his, uh, right from the time he gave his life to Christ, he prayed and he fasted for three days. In ministry, he prayed, and fasted often, how about you today? What about the apostles? Remember, in Acts chapter 2, the power of the Holy Ghost came upon their lives. And they did not say it was enough. In Acts chapter 3, remember, Peter at the beautiful gate, that important man rose up. That was in chapter 3. Look at chapter 13. The apostles, they gathered and they prayed and they fasted. You are going to tell the Lord, Lord, no eyes can be too much. I want to be soaked in prayers and in fasting often. As you saw the apostles of old, open your mouth and tell the Lord that the power that the privileges of prayers and fasting will accomplish our faith tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Old life, old life. Old life laden with strife. Old life laden with the falsehood and hypocrisy. Old life filled with transgression. Old life filled with impenitence and negligence. Another man, you know, such lies will never have anything to do with the new righteousness. The new righteousness that is obtained by faith will not go with provision and promises of the new covenant. You know, the concept of the old covenant will not go with the provision of the new covenant. It won't go with the love that we love our enemies, we feed them, we do them good, the old wine in the new bottle will not walk. Old life and claiming the provisions and claiming the love and claiming the righteousness of God with old life, it will not work. When you get back home, you check your life. As you go up tonight, know assuredly that with all the benefits of prayers and fasting, no assuredly that the demonstration of power in our lives and the apostles cannot be accomplished except we put new wine in the new bottles. I pray it will be so for your life. To be new faith, new creation. 
It will be new fellowship, new, uh, new fellowship, new captain. You have a new captain of your life. New freshness and new comforter. New fellowship and new congregation. Everywhere in all our congregations, we have new fellowship. I say we have new fellowship, new freedom, and new counselor. And you shall be free. You shall be free and free indeed. And new fasting, new comprehension. The Lord has brought to us tonight that we need to know and have the better understanding and comprehension of new fasting with prayers. And as you go tonight, the power of the Lord will accomplish this in your life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. We are grateful to you, Lord, because of your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for the way you have enriched our lives tonight again. Glory be to your name. We thank you, Lord, because we have seen the in death, the reasons why prayers will not be answered. And you have told us very clearly all that we need to do as new creatures so that we can benefit maximally from this wonderful privilege of prayer and fasting. Oh Lord, I pray it to be a new life. It to be a new resort. And as we go back home tonight, we go back home rejoicing. Your presence will bring joy to our lives. And that joy will remain until we see you face to face. Do it in our lives, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. O oh Lord, for our great teacher, our Father and the Lord, your own servant, you have used to reveal all these things to us again. Lord, I pray more revelations. You will grant unto him. More strength of the spirit. More power within and without. Oh Lord, physically, you will strengthen him. Oh Lord, spiritually, more grace. And Lord, we will enjoy more and more. And we will not be disobedient children in Jesus' name. We will go on. We will go forward. And we will do your will, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. In obedience and faithfulness. Faithfulness without hypocrisy. Oh Lord, we will do all things that your name in us will be glorified. Amen. Father, we thank you for the answer. As you go back home, your presence will go with everyone. Amen. Glory be to your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. The meeting is over tonight.